Referee Jay Nady, you stopped the fight. Was it because he went down a second time after the first knockdown? There was only one knockdown. He went down twice, but the reason I stopped the fight was because he was almost unconscious when he went down the first time, and his equilibrium was so bad the second time that I, I was concerned about the, uh, the second concussion syndrome, and I, did, I thought that if he got hit again, he might have some real uh, damage. It was one of the most memorable fights in the history of boxing, a legendary occasion with all three major world titles up for grabs, a showdown between the two best boxers in the 140 pound division, Kostya Zhu, the reigning WBA and WBC champion, the big punching Aussie, the thunder from down under. Against Super Zab Judah, the IBF champion, the speedy Southpaw, the unbeaten rising star. Judah with an uppercut, and he just pummels him to the head. Oh, Steve Smoker, the ref, watch it closely. Down he goes. Get over there. Third knockdown of the fight for Judah. Well, a statement was made. And Zab Judah has won his first world championship. He's the IBF Junior Welterweight Champion of the World. In today's video, we take a closer look at the legendary unification bout between Kostya Zhu and Zab Judah, recapping both boxers' careers before the bout, the bout itself, and the subsequent events following the highly awaited clash. What are you going to do with this Kostya Zhu fight? Uh, where will you watch it? And, and half of this is over. Are you concerned that he might not hold up his end now? After the fight, it's the after party. I don't even know if I'm watching the fight. We oh, gonna you're going to watch party. it. Don't give us that. Come the on. I know you're watching party, this fight man. with that big payday out there in, in mean, November. It's all good. I mean, you know, the money's, money's not a big thing right now. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. I'm living good. I'm maintaining them. You know, I mean, I just, I, like I said, I just want to thank God for putting me here in this position. But um, I, I wish I could do well, and I'm, I, and I'm really rooting for him in this fight because if he don't win, then I'll be all screwed up again. But um, so I, I, I really wish him well, and I hope he wins. And um, hopefully in November, me and him should lock heads up. Known for his exquisite speed, power, and precision, matched with an incredibly calm demeanor outside of the ring, Zhu was already sporting an impressive pro ledger by the time he was set to clash against Super Zab Judah, amassing 27 wins with just one defeat, with a staggering 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Before he faced Zab Judah in a unification bout in 2001, Zhu had already established himself as a dominant force in the 140-pound division, starting with a sensational six-round stoppage over Jake the Snake Rodriguez in 1995. Zhu floored Rodriguez three times in total before referee Richard Steele intervened and saved the Puerto Rican from any further punishment. It was a perfect display of Zhu's incredible speed, skill, and power picking up his first world title in impressive, dominant fashion. Champion of the world from the land down under, Sydney, Australia, Kostya Zhu. Picking up the IBF strap inside just 14 professional bouts, Zhu went on to make four successful defenses of the title, overcoming a variety of highly rated opponents, including Roger Mayweather, Hugo Pineda, Corey Johnson, and Jan Piet Bergman before stepping in against cool Vince Phillips in 1997. Good luck to you, Udachi. Former drug addict and considerable underdog Phillips pulled off the unthinkable, flooring Zhu in the seventh before stopping the defenseless champion on his feet in the tenth. Eager to get his hands on another world title opportunity, Zhu this time around focused on maneuvering himself through the WBC rankings, impressively knocking out four consecutive opponents en route to a crack at the vacant WBC belt against Mexican Miguel Angel Gonzalez in 1999. A swarm by Zhu, a barrage to the head. Not only got a good chin, he's durable, got a great big heart, he recovered well. This would have been impossible to predict. Uh -oh. 
Oh, what a combination to the head by Costa Zou, a left hook straight right hand to the head. There's a straight right hand to the nose again by Zou. Well, he's trying hard, but that being blocked by Zou. Zou comes back with a furious assault. Zou's used a lot of energy, too. He doesn't want to waste himself and let everything hang out with two rounds to go. Abel Sanchez is stopping him. Yeah, he is. That's it. And the referee, of course, has the last say, and the referee agrees. It's over. Almost a year after picking up his second world title against Gonzalez, Zhu took on Mexican superstar and 100-fight veteran Julio Cesar Chavez, flooring the former pound-for-pound -pound king with a thunderous right hand before forcing the stoppage midway through the sixth. It was a steady, punishing beatdown from Zhu, destroying the boxing legend with a dominant, punch-perfect performance. WBC champion Zhu added the WBA title to his collection when he faced Southpaw Sharmba Mitchell in February 2001. After seven rounds of scrappy back-and-forth action, Mitchell was forced to withdraw from the bout, citing an injury to his knee. Now in possession of two world titles and widely considered the main man in the weight class, Zhu had his heart set on a mega undisputed clash against unbeaten star Zab Judah. Undefeated Judah had amassed a stunning 27 wins on his unbeaten slate by the time he was set to face Zhu, earning a reputation for his sensational speed and skill. Super Zab was one of the most promising rising stars of the sport, with an unorthodox southpaw style that would regularly bedazzle and befuddle his opponents. Zab's first major step up in competition came against fan favorite Mickey Ward in June 1998, outpointing the rugged 39 fight veteran over 12 tough rounds. A fight that Zab later recalled as the toughest fight of his career due to Ward's unrelenting attacks to the body. Zab Super Judah! Judah's next big win came in January 1999, when he knocked out Wilfredo Negron in the fourth round to win the interim IBF light welterweight title. Negron was a Puerto Rican fighter who had challenged for world titles before, but he was no match for Judah's power and precision. Combination by Judah. Judah pouring it on. Oh, what a right hook followed by a left, and that's going to do it. Negron doesn't know where he is. Judah's first world title win came in February 2000, when he knocked out Jan Piet Bergman in the fourth round to win the vacant IBF light welterweight title. Zab floored Bergman twice in the first round, before ending matters with a vicious uppercut that sent Bergman crashing to the canvas for the final time. And Zab Judah has won his first world championship. Judah made five successful defenses of his IBF title over the following two years, outpointing unbeaten Brit Junior Witter before kicking off a four-fight knockout streak over Tehran Millet, Hector Quiroz, Reggie Green, and Alan Vester. Combination follow-up combination. Vester's in trouble off the right hand, and it's right up Cowboy for Zab Judah. Sharp, oh. sharp counter right hook, Steve. Really caught Six. Vester. He didn't Seven. see it coming. He may not Eight. get up. Nine. That's it. Being waved off by Charles Dwyer. Sally, is it safe to say this is another big star in the rising? No doubt. He is a star in every way. No doubt. All right, star in every way. Where are you going from here, star in every way? Zoo, baby. Let's ride, baby. Come on, let's get it on. You know what I'm saying? You the best. I'm the best. Look, y'all let me in the door now. Okay, I reload it. Yeah. Taking place at the MGN Grand in Las Vegas on November 3rd, 2001, several bookmakers and fans considered the fight to be a true 50-50 showdown, with many observers unable to pick a winner. The tail of the tape showed a clear age disparity between the two and a considerable 5-inch reach advantage for Zab. But Zhu was widely considered the harder puncher, with more valuable rounds and experience under his belt. It's 12 rounds. Touch glove now, let's go to work. Judah started the fight exceptionally, peppering Zhu with quick fire combinations, outspeeding, and outworking Kostya with the much cleaner, sharper work for the first three minutes. 
sort of a headbutt to ruin this fight because a lot of anticipation coming over this one. Costa looking to land the big right hand. Instead, Zab shows his quickness of his hands again. Look at these shots lined up by Zab Judah. He's after Costa. Costa able to hold him off. Touches him up with a left. Good call for left hand. Wild with the right hand. It's considerably noticeable the hand speed of Zab Judah in comparison to Costa. So the southpaw has been able to land the more powerful shots in this round. In spite of the fact that Costa is considered the puncher. Costa Zero, of course, to the right of your screen. Zab with the, the red trim and his black trunks. And his Costa getting a shot throw. All right. Just a few seconds to go now to end round number one. And I think Zab Judah will get that of the three judges score. Things took a dramatic shift at the end of the second round. When Zhu landed a history-making right hand clean on the chin of Judah, completely discombobulating his senses, sending him staggering around the ring, struggling to remain upright. Down goes Zab Judah, and he's really hurt. Referee Jay Nady had no choice but to save disoriented Judah from any further punishment, waving off the bout with just one second left on the clock of the second round, prompting Zab to go on a rampage in the ring. Following the tirade against referee Jay Nady, Judah was eventually restrained by his trainers and father before being forced to hand over his IBF strap. What does it mean to you to be the undisputed 140 pound champion of the world? Uh, I become history in Australia, definitely, in Russia, definitely. And uh, for a long, long time, we never had the super lightweight champion of the world in this division. And I'm here again, and uh, I put myself in the uh, best pan-for-pan uh, -pan boxes in the world right now because I am one of the three who has got the all three belts. Judah faced disciplinary action from the Nevada State Athletic Commission for his frenzy after the fight. He was fined $100,000 and suspended for six months for launching the stool and trying to attack Nady. He apologized for his actions, but maintained that he should have been able to continue in his post-fight interview with Showtime's Tim course, Smith. But I got up like a soldier I am, you know, and, and maybe I may have reacted, a little, oh, I, I may have overreacted a little bit, but, you know, I'm sorry for that, but I just felt like I was still able to continue, and you got to feel, and I mean, you got to feel me in a big fight like this, emotions are involved, you know what I mean? And so for him to come over there and wave it off, I just was like, oh, so it's over? It can't be, you know what I mean? I mean, this is, this is a mega fight. I mean, it's not, this, this is not a fight that just, no, 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 you know what I'm saying? This is a mega fight. So for him to stop like that, I just felt like, you know, that was uncalled for. Judah moved up to welterweight after his suspension ended, winning the lesser regarded WBO title by beating Demarcus Corley in 2003. He then unified all three of the major titles by beating Corey Spinks in 2005. He lost those titles to Carlos Baldemir in 2006 before challenging Floyd Mayweather Jr. for the WBC title later that year. He lost by unanimous decision, but gave Mayweather one of his most challenging fights. Fights. Judah continued to fight until 2019, winning and losing several titles along the way. He retired from the sport with a record of 44 wins and 10 defeats. Zhu made two successful defenses of his undisputed titles after his sensational win over Judah, picking up a unanimous decision over Ben Tacky and stopping Jesse James Leha before being sidelined by injuries to his shoulder and Achilles in preparation for his rematch against Sharba Mitchell, forcing the WBA and WBC to strip Zhu of his titles, leaving just the IBF on the line when he faced Mitchell on November 6, 2004. Zhu destroyed his former foe with ease, flooring Mitchell three times before ending matters with a thunderous flurry at the end of the third. In this third round, so goes to work and that's it. After such a clinical, destructive performance against Mitchell, Zhu shockingly suffered his second career defeat at the hands of the hitman Ricky Hatton in his next bout prompting Zhu to retire from the sport at the age of 35. With a remarkable record of 31 wins with just two defeats, boasting a stacked resume of highly ranked opponents, as well as becoming the undisputed king of the super lightweight division, going down in the history books as one of the greatest boxers in the history of the weight class.